Grammar Girl here. I'm Mignon Fogarty, and you can think of me as your friendly guide to the English language, writing, history, rules, and cool stuff. Today, I have a quick and dirty tip about how to write the names of computer programs and document formats, and a tidbit about something called StetWalk. But first, today's episode is supported by Stitcher. Wherever or however you're listening to this podcast right now, you should take a moment and check out Stitcher. Stitcher is a free podcast app for iPhone and Android. Stitcher is home to more than 260,000 podcasts, including hits like Stuff You Should Know, Hidden Brain, Science Rules with Bill Nye, and of course, Grammar Girl. If you're on your phone, download Stitcher free right now in the Apple App Store or Google Play. Or visit stitcherapp.com slash grammar to learn more. And now, onto those pesky computer-related words. A listener named Ernan wrote that he was writing about Word documents and PDF documents or files. He said, quote, I'm struggling to know the proper way to address the name of these items. Is it Word document capitalized or Word document lowercase? Is it dot .pdf document with a period before the PDF? Or just PDF lowercase or all capital PDF, unquote. He also asked how to talk about multiple PDF files. In other words, how to make PDF plural. These are great questions. I've had to look up the answers myself in the past. According to the Chicago Manual of Style, the names of computer programs, operating systems, and so on are capitalized and written without quotations. For example, you'd write that you created a Word document with Word capitalized and document lowercase. Chicago also says you write file formats in all caps, so you'd then write that you converted your Word document to a PDF or a PDF file with each of the letters in PDF capitalized. The F in PDF doesn't stand for file. It stands for format in portable document format, so PDF file isn't redundant. If you have two, they are PDFs, with PDF in all caps and then a lowercase s at the end. The AP Stylebook is less clear about these kinds of abbreviations, but it does say to use all caps for JPEG, GIF, PDF, and MP3. On the other hand, it recommends lowercase for zip files, and lowercase if you have to quote someone talking about a .exe file, for example. Thanks for the question, Hernan. I hope that helped. I've been using the hashtag StetWalk on Twitter and Instagram, and every time I do, someone asks what StetWalk is. So here's a quick explanation. It's a hashtag that editors use to post pictures they took while they were out walking. Editors tend to be sedentary, and we can all use some encouragement to get out of the office and get moving. It started a few weeks ago when Tanya Gold, who goes by Editor Tanya on Twitter and Instagram, posted about how she had fallen out of her habit of daily walks. She asked if anyone else was having the same problem and if people wanted to do something fun to hold each other accountable. She said, quote, I've done photo exchanges with friends over the years and have always loved being able to see how others see the world. And what better way to show you've been somewhere and done something than taking a photograph, unquote. Tanya asked some friends to help her come up with a name, and she liked Heather Saunders' suggestion the best, Stetwalk. Heather said, quote, I brainstormed a tag with the goal that it would be fun, memorable, and related to editing. But most of all, I wanted it to be cheerful, so it'd be fun to post. I liked the playfulness of Stetwalk because it combines a term that means let it stand with doing anything but standing still, walking, running, even simply getting outside for a minute, unquote. I'm more of a writer and podcaster these days than an editor, but anyone can participate. You can browse everyone else's pictures for inspiration, too. Last week, I saw a pig on a leash while out walking, and that made for a great picture. If you want to play along, just take a picture while you're out on a walk and post it with the hashtag StetWalk. That's hash S-T-E-T-W-A-L-K. This also got me thinking about the word stet and why we use it. It's an editing term that, as Heather said, means let it stand, and it comes from Latin. You typically use it when you want to reject a copy editor's suggestion, to let the original text stand. It goes all the way back to the 1700s. The first example in the Oxford English Dictionary is in a chapter called Of Correctors and Correcting 
in John Smith's book, The Printer's Grammar, published in London in 1755. It reads, quote, Where words are struck out that are afterwards again approved of, they mark dots under such words and write in the margin stet, unquote. A little more than a hundred years later, people started using it as a verb, saying things like, if you don't like my edits, you can stet them, and ugh, I stetted so many edits yesterday. And that 1755 book, The Printer's Grammar, is available free on Google Books and looks really interesting. It's mostly about the history of printing and has multiple chapters on different typefaces. The only problem is that it's slow reading because it uses the long S, which is the lowercase s printed in a way that makes it look like the letter F to us reading it today. The long S was common in the mid-1700s and only fell out of use around 1800. If you're interested, I'll put a link to it in the Stetwalk article on quickanddirtytips.com. And I hope to see your posts online. Finally, I have a familect story. Hi, Grandma Girl. This is Gabrielle from Beloit, Wisconsin. I am calling with a familex. Uh, years ago, my husband and I lived near an Italian sports car dealership. And every time we would drive by, my husband would be like, oh, I'd love one of those. Every time. And I would say really high insurance, because that's my first thought when I saw Italian sports cars. And finally, after years of doing this, he turned to me one day and he said, what do Italian shorts have to do with anything? And I looked at him and I said, no, I said really high insurance. But now every time something seems excessive or expensive that he wants or that I want, we look at each other and we go, Italian shorts because it brings us back to that moment. So I thought that would be a funny one for you. I have more, but I know you want one for each message. And I hope you have a lovely day. Thanks, Gabrielle. That's a good one. If you want to hear your family story on the show, the story of a word your family and only your family uses, your family dialect, leave a voicemail message at 83-321-4-GIRL. And be sure to tell me the story behind the word, because that's always the best part. I'm Mignon Fogarty, Grammar Girl and author of the New York Times bestseller, Grammar Girl's Quick and Dirty Tips for Better Writing. And thanks to my audio producer, Nathan Sems. This show is part of the Quick and Dirty Tips podcast network, so check out some of our other shows like Nutrition Diva, Get It Done Guy, Get Fit Guy, and more. That's all. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.